as it is. We can stand our ground and we can wait for backup, or we could give up. Now, if we stand our ground, they'll likely shoot us. If we give up, well, they'll likely shoot us anyway. What else could he do? Well, he could surrender, but I wouldn't count on that. You know something? We could jump. Like hell we could. No, no. Would you make a jump like that if you didn't have to? Look, I have to, and I'm not gonna. All right, I'll go first. No. All right, you go first. No means no. What is wrong with you? I can't swim. The quality of the water alone will probably kill us. Look, does this conversation seem strangely familiar to you? Uh, oddly, yes. All right, on the count of three? One. Why would I say frost heat? What the heck would frost heat mean? It's frost it doesn't have heat, right? So what does he even mean? Wait, in two seconds, they would have been here. What if they hadn't come? You're a maniac, Razor. Heave is like when you throw up, you know? The frost sort of throws up the ground, right? And that's why your foundations have been moving. And that's why you got a basement full of water. No, I got a basement full of water because the sewer backed up. Not water. You don't have water anymore. You got to help get a different problem now. Yeah, they've been going at it for a while now. Prof, it's a good collar. They did good. The differences. The differences, huh? What do you propose we do, Ray? We are officers of the law. I know that. We're cops. I don't have a cape. You don't have a cape. No, but I do wear a uniform. You carry a badge. My Sam Brown is sort Look, of. Why like are you a... arguing with me? I am not arguing yes, with you. Yes, you are. That's that thing again. You're correcting. You're niggling. You're doing that thing with the with the T's and the I's. And I say A, you say B. I say night, you say day. I think you should be reasonable. I don't do it all the time. Look, you just did it again. You I... just did it again. It's like some kind of disease. It's not a Look, disease. Look, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't understand. I don't want to hear it. Ray, would you just listen to me? Look, I swear, I swear to God, I will punch you right in the face. Fair warning. Well, what does that no, mean? I'm going to punch I'm you. I'm going to punch you in the Just face. Just think Why don't you listen to me? Baseball cap, orange slacks, orange shirt, carrying a pizza. Is there a light on the car outside with flashing lights marked pizza by any chance? Becky O. Want to come in here for a minute? Okay, and one last question. Did you order a pizza? Fraser, I have something here that I'd like to discuss with you that. Constable, I understand that you live here, but during the day... Yes, sir. It's just that, you see, well, uh, Detective Vecchio and I were... Well, we were in pursuit of three individuals who were from the FBI's most wanted list. Just... Just stay in, in uniform, Fraser. <sighs> yes, sir. I have something for you. This came in today. Transfer? To Ottawa. So I can get my own life back? My own name? Well, frankly, I'd choose something a little more interesting if I were you, but if that's what you want, go ahead. Well, you're not going to take it, are you? Well, I, I haven't. Be because over the years, we've developed a relationship. Working, uh, of course, a, a working relationship. And, and, and 
you might be hard to replace, cost-wise. I, I mean, not everybody would live here in his underwear. The, the work live in a place where he works. This is where it started, so this is where we'll end it. All right, I was over there. Right. I can't do this right. Look, you have to. This is for good. You put in your transfer, I'll put in mine. It's quits. You sure about this? Uh, this is 117. We got a 1052 at South Speedway. Need immediate assistance. Treasure. Chess. He's dead. All right. Okay. One more case. Then we're done. Treasure chest, maybe? Looks like the head of a dog. Very good work. It looks like it was carved into the skin. With his hook, maybe. Captain Hook. It would seem to be a map. Well, of course it's a map. He's a pirate. Franny, can you run some prints for me? Check them against any known pirates. Pirates? What do you mean, like pieces of eight and sliver me timbers? It's shiver me timbers. It's sliver. Franny. Ray, what can that mean, shiver me timbers? That doesn't mean anything. Sure it does. It means like shake your booty, something like Ray, pirates, they slide down masts, wooden masts. Sliver, you get it? Sliver in their timbers? Shiver. I never got that. You know, Ray, we do not know that he's a pirate. For all we know, he might be an accident-prone accountant. You ever try to run a calculator with a hook? No, but appearances can be deceiving. You know, I once knew a trapper in Great Slave Lake who ran his trap lines dressed in a three-piece suit. He looked like a banker. Of course, he carried his bait in his pocket, so the smell was... Well, that's a, that's a different story. Fraser, a guy dies. He's got a hook and he's got an eye patch. He says treasure. He says chest. What do you think he is? Ray. If there are any pirates on the Great Lakes, which I sincerely doubt, I think it's highly unlikely that they would go about dressed like some character invented by Robert Louis Stevenson. Stevenson. Hey, Ray, I got an ID. His name's Billy Butler. He worked the lake boats most of his life. He's got three convictions for uh, drug smuggling and one for assault. Accountant? Pirates. Thank you. Yeah, used to live in that chair. Moved out about a year ago. 
I haven't seen her since. You see this guy? Anybody here seen Butler? <laughs> You know this guy? Seen him before? What are you? Is that a wolf? Uh, yes, mm. matter of fact, it is. A wolf in a bar is bad luck. No, man, that's a woman on a ship. Well, that too. No, that's whistling on a ship, you idiot. Wolves, there's gotta be something about wolves. Well, I know there are a number of nautical superstitions, but I can't think of any offhand that actually feature wolves. I can't be too careful these days. And why is that, sir? There's bad things stirring in the waters. Ghost ship. With a crew long dead, flying the colors of the Mackenzie. Hey, come on, you old bastard. You had too much to drink. Hey, have you seen this guy? All right, come on. See him? Butler. He's the name. Come on. That's all right. I don't want to hear none of that. Goat ship? Ghost ship. Seems to have scared them all off. Hey. Left some stuff down in the cell if you want to go through it. What are you doing? Well, my uncle Tiberius owned a very similar trunk in which he had hidden some pictures of naked. Uh huh. Gold. I told you, pirates. Possibly. What do you mean, possibly? The guy said uh, the treasure, the guy said chest. You know, we uh, found the chest, and uh, this is the treasure. One bar? Well, where there's one, there's a, there's a pile. You know, that's, that's the way treasure works. <laughs> what are you doing? You can get no, somebody. Sorry, to... sir. Terribly sorry. Who the hell are you? Why are you following us? My name's Lou. Blind Lou, by any chance? That's right. Got information about Billy if you're wanted. What do you got? Huh. <sighs> 70 bucks. 70 bucks? Yeah, get an old blind man a decent meal. Where are you gonna get it? Europe? 20 bucks. 50. It's deductible. Look, this better be good. <sighs> it is. <sighs> what is it? It's an editorial about crabgrass. <sighs> This is more like it. According to this, Billy Butler was drowned at sea over a year ago. 32 down on the Robert McKenzie! Okay, well and Yankee, Yankee as in Yankee Doodle Dandy Silver yeah, Warning. That's correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. And whaling, as in sperm. Sperm? No, yeah. Francesca, that's whaling as in whaling on a guy's head. Like... Look, I don't believe this. A guy on a wharf's got better information than we do. Says who? Says this. Billy Butler sank on the Whaling Yankee over a year ago. Here lies the body of John Brown, who was lost at sea and never found. Francesca, ask Fraser what's that supposed to mean. It's supposed to mean that your guy drowned, and then what? He swam, crawled, stabbed himself so that he could hang out with Mort. OK, so we got a bit of a mystery. Indeed we do. Hey, I got it. It's excellent, Francesca. Thank you, Frazier. Wailing Yankee went down a little more than a year ago. All hands lost. And now I found one of them. Hey, there's the crew. There's my friend, Billy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just found two of them. This guy, I saw this guy tonight in the murder. We both saw him, Francesca. Uh, make it bigger, will you, Franny? OK. Oh, oops. Come on, Franny, no whoops. OK, Don't OK, here. just relax. Let's see? Yeah. Learn fast. Fraser's not going to be around to help much longer. Andy Calhoun, print that out, will you, Franny? Uh, you're leaving, Fraser? Well, I, I've been offered a transfer to Ottawa. Oh. That's great. That's that's just that's great. Something wrong? No, I've um, I've just got something in my eye. Ah, well, if you pull your lower eyelid up and fold it over. I'll your... be okay. Let's go. This guy's a killer. How do we know he's the killer? Two supposed dead guys show up in more or less the same place, and one of them gets a knife in the back, and you think somebody else did it? Well, it could have been a deranged accountant. That is so stupid. A deranged accountant? That's like saying a raging librarian. Francesca, can you uh, run Calhoun for me and see all you can get on the 
Wailing Yankee? Yeah. Yeah, Francesca, could you... The other evidence. I was gonna hold on to that. Ray, it is evidence. Francesca, are you, your eyes all right? Perfect. Good. I wonder if you wouldn't mind just checking the serial number for us. Gold. This could have been made into hundreds of wedding bands. Oh. Uh, Dave, we have to step out for a couple of minutes. Could you do me a favor and just keep an eye on Francesca? <laughs> Hurts my feelings. Anyone seen this guy? No. Seen him? How about you? Never seen him. Know this guy? No, I don't see him. Anyone? Gentlemen, good day. Hello, for this ad. Well, my name is Constable Ben Fraser, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Oh, yeah? What brings you here? Well, I first came to Chicago on the trail of the killers of my father. And what? You just stayed? As a matter of fact, I did, yes. Attached as liaison with the Canadian consulate. Interesting. Well, thank you. Thank you kindly. I wonder if I could trouble you gentlemen to tell me about the ghost ship. No. <laughs> Don't pay to talk about ghosts. Those that do are bound to see them. Those that see them are doomed to sleep on the bottom of the ocean. Wow, that uh, Canadian charm is working overtime today, Fraser. These men are afraid, Ray. Yeah, nobody saw anything. Perhaps he did. Is that a joke, Fraser? Because that's not funny. That's not at all sensitive or mounty like That's completely rude. For your gun? What for? Let's see. Excuse me, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, he's not blind. No, he is not. How'd you know that? Uh, it's an involuntary movement of the pupils. It's a dead giveaway. He's born blind. My eyesight's slowly getting better. Yeah, right, Charles. You know this guy? Liver clown ties on. Well, that's too bad, because if you helped us out, we wouldn't have to arrest you for impersonating a blind guy. Hey, drop the act! I seen him around the Albatross. Uh, do you recall anything he happened to say? He talked about the Mackenzie. Said he'd see the ghost ship prowling around the waters near the Six Fathom Shoal. It's not something you want to hear. Didn't go by the name of Calhoun, by the way. Called himself Nate Hester. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Can I go? Uh... Yeah? Hey, Ray, it's me. You know that guy, Andrew, you're looking for? Yeah. He's got a longer rap sheet than your guy, Billy. Yeah, Franny, what? Attempted murder, assault, nasty stuff. Mm. OK, thanks, Franny. Yeah. Oh, and hey, I checked out some of the other guys on the Wailing Yankee. Everybody in it has a long sheet. That's queer. Who owns it? I found out his name is Gilbert Wallace. He's the president of Illinois Lake Freight. What do you mean it's not unusual? That was like the con air of boats. Look, if we hire sailors, we don't kill ourselves checking their morals. Well, sir, of the 30 crew members you have, 29 of them have serious criminal records. Any other one we haven't tracked yet? That would seem to be a much higher proportion than could be accounted for by the law of averages. You go to the Union Hall, you get what you get. What do you know about uh, Vic Hester? As I said before, nothing. I knew none of these men. Now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I got work to do. We understand. Thank you kindly for your time. Do not do that, Fraser. Do what? Cut me off like that. I was going on my gut. When your partner's going on his gut, you gotta go with the flow. You gotta let it ride. You gotta... Ray, 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 Ray. What? Car's this way. Right. Car's this way. I knew that. Wallace said he hired the crew from the Union Hall. Yes, so? The caster may be looking for work. Then we better go to the Union Hall. So we're still partners then? But the problem is we're stale. Like bread or something. You know, maybe it is time for a change. I imagine you'll be taking that transfer then. And you'll take yours. Aha. Henry Allen. Henry Allen? Another alias. Yeah, no, I think she's referring to a ship, right? Yeah, sailing from Sault Ste. Marie at 9 in the morning. Your guy's on it. Thank you kindly. 
Well, if I had a sextant, Ray, I could locate the vehicle in a heartbeat. Mr. Sextant, I told you exactly where the car was. Yes, you did, but we've been walking around in circles for the last five minutes. I think it's to the right. To the right of what? That's not a description of to where the, right the car... To the right of where we... Don't go looking for the Mackenzie! <laughs> Come on! Look, Fraser. There's the car. Right by the boat. Right where I told you. I think we're onto something, Ray. Oh, yeah. Like getting killed. Look, I may be damaged, Fraser, but I'm not stupid. More to life than dying. A partnership is like a marriage, son. Give and take, up and down. Who left the empty butter dish in the fridge? It isn't easy. No, it isn't. Buck Frobisher and I were a team, maybe the best team the North has ever known. One day, we fell out, and it all but destroyed us. What did you do? We swallowed our pride for the greater good. Someone is using a brave ship's name for an evil purpose, and you've got to stop them. You need the anchor. Swallow the pride, son. Ray. Look, Fraser, I know what you're going to say. You give me a reason. You give me one reason why we should risk our skinny asses chasing the Robert McKenzie. That he's way out of our jurisdiction. We have no authorization. Okay? On November 1st, 1969, the Robert McKenzie left the pier in Thunder Bay carrying 28,110 long tons of high sulfur coal, bound for the steel mills in Detroit. She was 810 feet long, 80 feet wide, crewed by 32 men and captained by Scotty Phillips. And no one on board could have known they were headed into a gale known as the Witch of November. By 2 a.m. on the second, the seas were already running at 20 feet. The winds were gusting at 50 miles an hour. At 3.13, Mackenzie radioed her sister ship, the Phoenix, and say she'd taken a wave over the wheelhouse, knocking out her radar. She was blind in the water, navigating by dead reckoning. Captain Phillips decided to head south to the shelter of Dead Grease Bay by way of Keweenaw Point. But by then, the seas were running over 40 feet. The winds were blowing at 100 miles an hour. And at 4.23, a wave broke, exposing a mountain of rock known as Six Fathom Shoal. And time stopped. Mackenzie hit the shoal broadside, cutting her in half. The stern was still under full power, and it rammed the bow, crushing men on metal as they were caught midships, scrambling for lifeboats. It hit the bow three times before it finally drove it under. And then the stern continued into the night, with all its lights blazing, with fires burning from the ruptured boilers like some kind of headless beast. Captain Phillips' last transmission to the Phoenix read, 32 down on the Robert McKenzie. All right. Say we drive like hell. I mean, put the pedal to the metal. Could we get to uh, Sault Ste. Marie and get on uh, Henry Anderson before she sailed? Allen. Uh, Henry Allen. Yes. Right. Allen. Go on.
third one third. Good to see you, Benton boy. Yes, and you too, sir. Stirs up memories. Wait a minute, Free. You know this guy? Yes, Captain Smithers is an old friend of my father's. As a matter of fact, he taught me how to tie my first knot. Oh, dear. <laughs> Double cloven half hitch. Tie a knot in his tail to hold the devil down. Does everybody in Canada know everybody? Uh, no. Old Bob Fraser. Oh! Who's he calling old? Uh, I've been uh, dead for years and I still look twice as good as you. back a long way, me and Bob. Mm. I saved his life in a bar fight once in the. Uh, Skagway. Skagway. How did you know that? Oh, yeah, your father told you in 59. That's a crock. Uh, Bart Anderson got liggered up and came after him with a harpoon. It was a small pocket knife. <laughs> Luckily, I got between him and your dad. I sure did. He was yeah. as goggle-eyed as old Bart. I had to throw them in the brig to sleep it off. <laughs> Those were the days. I <clears throat> hate to interrupt memories, but um, we think you might have a killer on board. My crew? In your crew, sir. Well, son, you show me the maggot and I'll take him apart like that more in the Dardanelles, huh? By God, I'll throw him in the brig. You got a brig? Well, no. Oh, you see? He wouldn't be able to tell the truth if his life was on a hole in here. Now, sir, we don't think that there's any pressing need to disassemble this man. At the moment, he's just a suspect. Uh, we would like to observe him unobtrusively. Unobtrusively? Yes, sir. How are you going to do that? Now that we're out here, we're away from the city, doing good, honest work. Yeah, there's nothing like it, is there? Hell, maybe. Bad luck having a strange crew on board. Yeah, especially on the North Shore route. Why's that? I passed by the graveyard they call Six Fathom Shoals. Is there anything on this ship that isn't bad luck? Eddie Walter saw her last week. He was on the Bailey Madison. Robert McKenzie cut across her bow. Dead men on the deck, crying out for help. I saw her once myself. She come up on us in the night. Nothing on the radar, and there she was. I don't want to see her again. I said we get the captain to hit the south road. I'd like to see you tell old Ironbottom where to sail his ship. You'd have your guts for garters in a second. Well, he's got no call crossing us with old goat ship. I don't want to see the face of the dead man stare back at me in the middle of the night. Jeez, I hate ghosts. Maybe they got involved in a, a case and forgot to report in. Constable Fraser failed to fill out the daily one of the one of the one of no, you <laughs> What do you suggest we do? Well, I think you should make the point of the I am walking the entire big of the Canadian Council. Well, you know who's the... Want to turn this against my son? <laughs> and I walk. All night. Dark. As if the stars themselves had fled. She come out of the fog, draped in seaweed. A foul stench rolling across the water. What is this? You eat that? Oh, food, Ray. Good, hearty food. Just the thing after a long day's work. Does it come with instructions? Uh, open mouth, put in. What's mm. it? It broke through the clouds and shone her light on the faces of the dead. Their eyes were like the devil's own. And their faces were pale and waxen. Gentlemen, there's something I'd like to get off my chest. What's that? Oh, the year was 1778. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. Huh? A letter of mark came from the king to the scummiest vessel I'd ever seen. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier, the last to bear its privateers. <laughs> oh, the antelope sloop was a sickening sight. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. Jealous to the port and his tail did wag And the cook in the scuppers with the staggers and jags God damn them all I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold We'd fire no guns, shed no tears <laughs> I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier The last of Eric's prime of years On the king's first day we put to sea How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now We were 91 days from a sea go 
It's funny. This is not the room I was looking for. I, I was looking for the the skull, the the top, the the, the front, the, the head, the head. See, I've been drinking and I'm 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 lost, so I just got all it's a large boat ship, and uh, I'll just circumnavigate myself up this way, and the head will probably be. Twenty-third year. Oh, I wish I was to stay here and for the captain. It's been six years since we sailed away, and I just made Halifax yesterday. Yeah, damn them all! I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man on the Halifax pier. The last of the Halifax privateers. Hi, hi. Oh, that's great. Gold robbery, the big gold robbery. What gold robbery? The, the, the big one, the big one, you know. The, this is from there. Ray had Princess. this. Princess! Take a deep breath. Okay. All right, let it up slowly. And think of the color yellow. What is it? Okay, okay. Frazier and Ray found this in the stuff of the dead pirate. Pirate? The guy with the hook, the eye patch, Billy Butler. Mm -hmm. So I just called and they traced it. This was part of the big shipment that got stolen from the Chicago Federal Reserve Bank last year. You're kidding. That was huge. That was a hundred million in gold bullion. Yeah, they were seasoned pros. They killed the six guards. This is what Fraser and Ray are investigating? Apparently. And, and not to get lost in the shuffle, we have an excellent lead. All we need to do is find the robbers, and we'll find Constable Fraser. Someone has tampered with your radar. My radar? That's all right. But nevertheless, I think. Huh? Can you manipulate this image? Sure. Can you make it seem further out? Yeah. Looks like the head of a dog. Yeah, <laughs> right. It looks like a golden retriever. It could be a lair ball. Doberman. Doberman. Yeah. <laughs> It's also a motive for murder. What? It's also a motive for murder. Ship! Ship in the water, dead ahead! No sign of it on the radar screen. She it goes. It's the Mackenzie, the Robert Mackenzie! Oh, stop blithering, you Look there! funny about this whole setup. Those are the worst looking ghosts I've ever seen. They don't look too good. What's wrong with them? Well, theoretically, they're dead. Well, I'm dead. Nothing wrong with me. Look at them. They look pale. Look at me. I'm pink. They're draped in seaweed. Helmsman! Helmsman! Right. Yeah, I'm fine. Helmsman! 
Back on the wheel, Captain. I'll deal with the crew. Flash down the wheel? Captain, I'll use a running Poland. Running Boland, running Boland, running Boland. You know what this is, son. You know what this is. What is it? The rabbit comes out of the hole, runs around the tree, goes back in the hole. And... No, 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 wait, 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 wait. You know what it is? What? It's not a rabbit. It's a squirrel because he goes up the, up the tree. And it's a squirrel because the tail is longer, meaning the end of the rope. And it doesn't go back in the hole. Of course it doesn't go in the hole. It's a squirrel. Exactly. Well, what does the squirrel do? Off my bridge! Oh, you got to do his head, no! Stay out of rubber the candy territory! Keep my ship! I'll hit her anywhere I damn well please! You this capsided, scum-sucking son of a puxy team! But you shut up! You do what he said! We ain't crossing no ghost ship. Hold on, turn that shit! You're gonna let him get his own ship and go there! Come on, Edward, they've heard you the ship! You get back to your station and do what I tell you! I'll get your life heading! I'll tell your partner, I just assembled that mall in the Dardanelles. Get out of here! Get in about the ghost ship, old man! Don't listen to him! It's the wailing Yankee disguised to look like the Robert McKenzie. He's What's lying! And the crew are not ghosts, they are criminals. What? How come you didn't show up on the radar then, huh? Yeah. yeah! Because you tampered with the radar. He also killed a man in Chicago, a man who was carrying a map that pinpointed a location roughly 30 miles east of here. What's that? I never killed anybody? He killed that man to prevent him from revealing that location. A location so secret that they invented a phony ghost ship to scare people off. Are you gonna side with this cowardly murdering scum? Will you side with those who would destroy the reputation of the men who sailed the Robert McKenzie? How do we know you're telling the truth? Look at him. He's a Mountie. He is a Mountie. Yeah, yeah, he is a Mountie. Yeah, he's a Mountie. Yeah, he's a Mountie. Yeah, he's a Mountie. It's in the truth. Has to be told. Not one. Stay your course. Come on. We gotta get something. All right, you miserable sons of. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Tell me where my partner is. Why should we tell you? Because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> now, this is why you need the Yang, so you can threaten them with force. Tell them he's going to kick them in the head or jump Bogar all over them, or one of those other colorful expressions he's so fond of. I could do that, or they would never believe you, son. Well, they might. Well, I'll give it a try. So I shall. Tell me where my partner is, or I will kick you in the head. Really? No, oh, no, not, not really. Don't ship dead ahead, Benton. Stay your course. There's nothing I can do to you. Right.
pick the lock. Pick the lock! That's good, Fraser. That's very good. Good lad. Burn. There. I want you to put your head under this bucket. Thanks, Fraser. Sometimes we can be nice, Fraser. Directions on this map, but you're only going. 